Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars and I have for you today episode 6.4 of the video series Satan's Powers and What to Do About Them by Alice B. Claggett. Episode 6.4 is entitled Lack of Logical Mind. It's quite short and it goes like this. Do the negative astral beings have logical minds? The answer, I feel, most likely is no. Because when they obsess or possess a person, the person loses the sense of logic and descends into invective and repetitive nonsensical sayings. I've seen this happen once uh, as a uh, negative astral being that possessed a woman, uh, an older woman, not too old, but older. Um, it's an image that sticks in my mind to this day, though it happened many years ago, and it filled me with determination never to find myself in such a situation. It was appalling, truly appalling, and I hope you never have to go through such an experience of viewing someone who is possessed by a negative astral entity. It's as if all humanity was is wiped from their minds. There's no more logical mind. What remains is, is a, a pathetic attempt to prevent the demon from inhabiting the mind by speaking over and over again nonsense terms or in a sing-song voice or singing over and over again the same refrain which helps I feel to some extent in in the pitiable attempt of a human being in such a situation to fend off the insatiable cruelty of such possessing beings. Really there's nothing to help us and we find ourselves in the situation except for the crucifix, God's name and the protective influence of saints and angels and Christ himself. There's nothing as strong as those beings on earth except for those beings in the higher dimensions. On a lighter note I have an image for you called Pan, P-A-N, by Mikhail Vrubel, 1899, from Wikimedia Commons, and it's in the public domain. Uh, the thing about Mikhail Vrubel is that he, he, he was always painted demonic obsession, and this image of Pan looks like a man who has been possessed by a negative astral entity, I feel. That's not the usual way of depicting Pan. But I note in particular the use of the flute. Looks like a wood flute that's held in the man's hand. Might be an attempt by this man through a sing-song sort of repetitive melody to ward that being off. I'll show you. You can see what you think of it, what you make of it. Okay, here goes. See, eerie, isn't it? Frubel is always like that. Here's the flute. There's a strange look in the man's eyes, isn't it? Very strange look. And the sight of the moon is somehow sinister to me too. He had quite a knack for, for portraying this and an eye for it too. And it seems the only images that he painted had to do with obsession or possession. A very unusual artist. Well, this is three episodes I've recorded during a time of dark interference with repetitive motor noises and cars going by on an otherwise often deserted street and airplanes zooming overhead. It's been quite a series of episodes and I hope that this will be enough to see us through until there's a time when the newest sphere clears and the magnetosphere of Earth settles and becomes more balanced and some of the remaining episodes in this series 
can be filmed under more peaceful and uplifting conditions. Meantime, this is an, a chance to get on video what it is like to film during a time of dark interference. I, I hope you all are able to develop a, a sense of humor about it. Uh, as light workers, I think we have to do that because as we start off as light workers, we tend to think there are demons that come around and bother us during times of X flares and incoming solar gusts and like that. And it does seem like that, but in fact, you can also take it that uh, the energies of Earth are simply leveling up and sorting together and achieving a new balance. And I feel that to be an easier way to deal with the ups and downs of light and dark here on Earth. That's all for now. God bless you all and keep you safe and be with you through all your days.